Hey guys, James here. You're watching The Filmmaker's Project, and as you can see, I'm on a new set. This set's going to be used for our upcoming podcast, For Filmmakers. That's the name of the podcast, as well as its target audience, For Filmmakers. It'll be coming to this channel soon, as well as several other platforms, which will be announced when the first episode hits YouTube. But this video is about making your own web series. Now, I have have a successful web series currently. It's entering into the development of its third season. I'm currently writing. Uh, you can check that out in the link in the description below. It's a thriller web series based on several different creepypastas, which are internet horror stories if you're not familiar with what a creepypasta is. And uh, I've also worked on a, another series that's been stuck in development hell for uh, over two years now. So I've sort of gotten a pretty good idea of what you should and shouldn't do when trying to make your own web series. So let's get right into it. So first you have your idea. That's the easy part though. Once you have your idea, you're gonna need to develop it. This means that you're going to want to minimize the amount of actors and crew members needed in order to pull it off and maximize the potential longevity. You may have a great idea, but it may not work as well for a long-term series as you might think once you've developed it later and thought out where can each thing lead to the next. Now, this goes into after having developed the idea, assessing it, figuring out exactly how many crew members, bare minimum, are you gonna need and are you gonna be able to get that many crew members? Also, how long are you gonna need them for? Same for the cast. How many do you need? How long are you gonna be able to have access to them? How will their scheduling work? Are you gonna be able to actually get these cast and crew members on set to film? You're also gonna to need to take into consideration how long it's gonna take you to prep for, to shoot, and actually edit each of these episodes. If you were making something very VFX heavy, for example, it's gonna take you a long time to do the edits and the, uh, comp and the uh, compositing, that's the word I'm looking for, and the compositing of each episode. And if you don't have time to do that, well, that's just it, you're not gonna have time. You need to make sure that you're gonna be able to pull off everything in terms of scheduling, from getting things ready to shoot, from actually shooting, to editing and compositing, sound mixing, all that straight down to releasing. You're also gonna to wanna to remember what you have access to in terms of your prop availability, as well as location availability. Do you have access to the locations that you're gonna need? And if not, is it in your budget to rent these locations? For example, in season one of my web series, the first season was completely made with locations that were freely available to me that I could shoot anytime I needed. While season two, with the budget increase that it got, was able to rent out locations that we shot for about three days straight of just shooting one of these locations because we had it in the budget to access this location which we wouldn't have been able to get had we not had a budget increase. So remember, make sure when you're developing your idea, reassessing it, figure out whether you can actually or whether you'll be able to gain access to locations if you don't have access to them already. This also ties into whether or not you're going to have the gear required. For example, are you doing something that may need multiple cameras but you're not but you don't have multiple cameras that will be able to cut together well? Alternatively, is the way you plan on shooting this going to require other types of specialized equipment which you don't have? If you don't have this equipment, are you able to rent it? And if not, are you able to make some DIY solution to it? I mean, I'm a huge fan of DIY, even huge Hollywood productions use DIY, don't feel bad about using it. It's ingenuity, it's getting the job done on a lower budget. So need to make sure that when you're figuring out what you wanna do, that you can do it in terms of your equipment as well. That's the reoccurring theme here, is keep in mind realistic expectations for what you can do. Again, this goes for any of the practical or visual effects needed. Do you have the skills and time required to pull off whatever shot you need? Are you skilled enough making prosthetics and other puppets to do a practical effect? Or are you good enough with compositing and do you have enough time to do each of these things? If you don't, is someone that you're working with able to do these things and are they able to do it well? Moreover, if you really need to, are you gonna be able to hire someone to do it? Now, of course, the ideal is for you or someone that's working on the project with you to already be able to do it without having to bring in more people, but it is something very important to keep in mind. Finally, we have longevity. How many seasons can you get out of this and how many episodes in those seasons are there going to be? 
do you have a specific goal and how many seasons that you want to have, how many episodes you want to have? If so, keep that in mind. And then when you begin writing the script, you can build around that and outline accordingly. Once you actually get to the script writing and production phase, you can pretty much treat it like any other film that you've worked on, which is actually the way I treat it. Once I have all these specific considerations that are specific to web series, then uh, I just tackle it like any other project, which is how it works out most of the time. Now, after you've done all these assessments, it's important to keep in mind whether or not you can really do it. Seriously ask yourself, is this possible? But at the same time, do not just get rid of an idea because it seems like it'll be hard. I make sure with my web series specifically, I always use that as an opportunity to push myself as a filmmaker. I've tried doing bigger and bigger things each season. The last season that I did was the biggest shoot I've ever done with shooting three days straight on a location. You can use this as an opportunity to really push yourself and make something great. So remember, find out if you can realistically do it but also, if it's on the upper end, maybe becoming a little tiny bit unrealistic, go for it anyways. You won't regret having done so. So if you want to check out my web series, so you see that I'm just not making everything up, you can check that out in the link below, in the links in the description below. And uh, you can subscribe. Remember to check out our podcast when it comes out. That's it for this episode on The Filmmaker's Project, and I'll see you in the next video.